Okay, so we're going to clear it again. We cleared it the other day. So remember, clear is right above the 9 key. So if I do Shift 9, and then it has the clear with the question mark, then you just follow whatever it says. 3 for all equals for yes, and then hit the AC button. Okay. Um, we can store on this calculator, so that's something we're going to look at today. We don't have to store some of the numbers we use today. I'm actually going to show you what to do without having to store it, but um, it's going to become a necessity on some things that we do that we actually store the answers, so we want to make sure we know how to do it on here. Um, it's similar to what you would do on those 83s and 84s, but um, where the negative sign is right here, in that whole row with the trig stuff, you see in the red it's A, B, C, D, E, F. So those are all places you can store, and then right below that on the parentheses and the SD, there's X and Y, and you can store them in X and Y as well. So we're going to store something. So just type in, um, the, like, the month that you were born. So I was born in November. I'm going to type in an 11, type in whatever. And then I'm going to store that in A. So above the 7 key is the recall key, the RCL, and in yellow above that it says STO. So we're going to do shift and recall. Goodness, that's going to store it. And I'm going to store it in A. So I don't have to hit anything else except the negative sign, and it's going to store it in A for me and tell me that it's there. Okay? So then I can hit clear. Oh, that's what that is. All right, Amber Alert, y'all can clear your phones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, so then uh, to get that back, if you hit the AC button so it goes away, um, you have two different ways that you can get this back. It, since, it's in the, since I put it in A, I can just hit alpha and then the A and equals, and it tells me that it was 11. That's why I wanted you to type in something you knew so you knew you were getting something back. And then, or your other option is just using the recall key. You have to stop, so you can just do recall negative. And it tells you that A is 11. Okay, so it's the same. You know, it doesn't matter whatever makes the most sense to you. But know where to store things. You won't need. I mean, you have the whole alphabet available to you on the 83. You don't even need the whole alphabet. This is plenty. Okay, for whatever we're gonna need. Okay, so we all good with that? Just something we gotta know how to do. All right. And then the question was asked of me today: If you could, you have a graphing calculator. Can you bring that? Use that? Yes, that's fine. Just know that on a test or a quiz, I'm gonna make you clear. And if so in stats, you may not want to clear it because you have programs and stuff that you put on there. And if you think, okay, well, now you have to use this for testing. If you use then I think you use it once. Okay, all right, so let's go to solving right triangle. Let's go on page 96. So our applications. Um, angles of elevation and depression, total review from geometry, just like Friday was. So angles of elevation, mostly you get those right. Those aren't a problem because um, they're kind of hard to mess up. And if you mess up on it, it really has nothing to do with the fact that you don't understand an angle of elevation. It's the angle of depression that gets drawn incorrectly the majority of the time if something's going to get drawn incorrectly. We're not going to work every single one of these. We don't need to. But once you draw and label it, then you're at the same part, the same point where we were on Friday, and you can totally solve those. But you got to get it drawn and labeled correctly first. So let's look at number one. It says a fire started at a campsite located eight miles from the base of a, of a mountain. If the angle of elevation from the fire to the top of the mountain is 14 degrees, how high is the mountain? All right, so when you draw the picture, you don't draw, you know, beautiful lighthouse and everything like it has here. But if all you ever draw is just a triangle, that might work for you. But there are times where there's just a triangle drawn and somebody's confused and say, okay, well, where's the fire? Where's the tower? And like, I don't know. That's a problem. That's why you don't know what you're doing because you don't know where anything is. So it is helpful to have, you know, just some simple little landmarks. So, for instance, I'm going to have a mountain. There, there's my mountain. And then um, here's my campfire. There's my campfire. And um, let's see. The campsite is eight miles from the base. So this is eight miles. Um, the angle of elevation from the fire to the top of the mountain. So the angle of elevation goes with the ground here. This is 14 degrees. And I want to know how high is the mountain. Well, and regardless of whether or not the mountain is perpendicular, the height of the mountain is perpendicular. Because the height of anything is going to be measured as a perpendicular distance, regardless of it's leaning, leaning over or not. So then we have this. Um, when I go to set this up, am I going to use sine, cosine, or tangent? 
tangent because this is opposite and this is adjacent, right? So this is just the tangent of 14 is equal to x over 8. So I solve for x. x is equal to 8 times the tangent of 14. Now we type that in. So you can go ahead and type that in. And then we have to answer the question. Saying x equals here and having some number is not enough. Nobody asked me for x. It says how high is the mountain? So I have to say the mountain is. Okay. And what do we get? Okay, 1.995. That's a really small number. Does that make sense? It's miles, so it does make sense. So it's 1.995 miles high. So that whole reasonableness of an answer, and yeah, it should be less than 8 because that 14 is a small angle, even though my triangle looks almost isosceles. My triangles almost always look pretty much isosceles when I draw them because it makes it easier to label. It doesn't, they don't have to be drawn to scale. You just have to know that it's not to scale, and you're good. There's your answer. Okay. Questions about that? All right, so let's look at number three. Go ahead and read number three and draw and label a picture that goes with it. Number three, draw and label. So on this one, I would, this would be one where I might just have just a triangle and not really have anything else you know, that shows what's what on there, and that's fine. Um, so where does the 32 feet go on my picture? It is the hypotenuse. Um, the 18 feet, is that the vertical or horizontal distance? Vertical. vertical. And then the angle I'm looking for, is it on the top or the bottom? The bottom. Is that all easy and obvious? Yes, but sometimes on these, I get some very uniquely labeled pictures, like this being 32. Well, if this is 32 feet, then what the heck is this that's leaning against the wall like the ladder is supposed to be? And even though it clearly says with the ground, people will still label it there. So once you do it, once you draw and label it, reread it, make sure what you did makes sense. Right? What would I use here, sine, cosine, or tangent? Sine, because it's opposite and hypotenuse. So the sine of theta is equal to 18 over 32. How do I get theta by itself? In, good, inverse sine, so inverse sine of 18 over 32. And then go ahead and type that in. You can say the latter makes a Something degree angle, what do we get? nine degree angle with the ground. Okay. All right, everybody okay with that? Okay. Right, so we're going to talk about number four also for a few reasons. It's a big problem. And if you have an uncommon name like I do, it's never a word problem. I didn't even write it, and neither did anybody I know. So, um, so you, your name is I know. Uh, so it's a place kite is flying 60 feet above the ground. The angle of elevation is when your hand is holding the stream at the top of the kite. Degrees. It is five feet from the ground. Find the length of the stream. All right. Lana? How is that water? Fancy. <laughs> So um, here I am, and I'm flying a kite because that's what I do in my free time, if you didn't know. I'm not flying kites. Um, and that is 60 feet above the ground. The angle of elevation from where her hand is holding the string. So here's where the string is. It has to be made with the horizontal. So there's this, and the angles are right here. This is 48.3 degrees. And then hand is five feet from the ground. Find the length of the string, so this is x. All right, so first of all, we're going to solve this. 
going to design code sign hand. Here's my angle. This is opposite. This is adjacent. This is hypotenuse. So I'm looking for the hypotenuse. This is opposite. So I'm going to use sine. Am I going to use 48.3 degrees? Is my problem? Yes. Am I going to use 60 feet? Is my problem? No. no. What do you use? 55. That's why you give me that. So this is 55 feet because this is 5 feet. And this is the triangle that I'm using right here. And so it's going to be the sine of 48.3 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is 55. All right, so now we're going to jump to number six. Um, number five, we're not going to do. We're going to mark this one out, actually. Not that there's anything wrong. It, but we're going to use both boxes for number six. So we can draw the picture. This is the wall. This max. All right, so here's the rock wall. Here is Sarah over here. All right. So then she's got her two kids on. And two are the wall on her mat. Mat. So that's up here, down here. And then it says that the angle of elevation is 38 degrees to max. So and it doesn't say, now if you're actually going to measure an angle, there's different ways to measure it, but if you're holding a device, then how far your eyes are off the ground matters, okay? And if you were in my class for geometry, we went outside and used those clinometers, remember we went and measured things? I had to look straight ahead before you looked up. So we had to take into account how far your eyes are off the ground. Here it says nothing about that. If you're using a different type of device, that might already be taken into account with the measurement. So even though you're holding it up here, it's still really measuring it from the ground. And that's what we assume is happening if we have no other information. So the angle of elevation from her, wherever that is, it's the ground, to max is 38 degrees. Okay, so here's max. This is 38 degrees. And then from her to John is 27 degrees. There we go. And then what I'm looking for is how far, how much higher Max is than John. So I'm looking for this right here. Right. So since this little purple squiggle that I have makes a triangle with the blue and the orange lines that I have, can I just figure out this angle right here and then figure this side length out from that triangle? No, no because why? not a right triangle and all we know how to do right now is right triangles by the end of the week we'll know how to do stuff with more than just right triangles but right now we're still stuck with just that now do we have more than one right triangle we can actually calculate here yes, yes. so I can find this piece here which since I called this X I could call the other pieces Y and Z however on the calculator I'm using uh, there's no Z that, that I know of that I can find and so I'll just go ahead and use A and B for these so we'll say that this piece right here how far John is off the ground is A how far max is off the ground is B. So in the end, I'm looking for X, and all X really is is B minus A. Now, do you absolutely have to write this equation? The answer to that is no, but if you are storing things in the calculator, I highly, highly suggest you do something like that. So you know where the things are stored, and so in the end, once you find it all and you've stored it all in there, you know exactly what you have to do. You don't multiply backwards, subtract backwards, or do whatever the computation is. You know from the get-go what's going on there. Okay, but we're not even going to store these, actually. You can, but I'm going to show you uh, something else as well. So let's start with, um, we'll find A first. So that's the 27 degrees. So am I using sine, cosine, or tangent here? Tangent, because I'm looking for the opposite and I have adjacent, right? So this is a tangent of 27 it's equal to the opposite, which is A, over the adjacent, which is 35, which means A is just equal to 35 times the tangent of 27. And then I'm going to stop, because I don't even care what the decimal is at this point. 
Then I'm going to move on to the next one and find B. So the tangent of 38 is equal to the opposite, which is B, over the adjacent, which is 35. So B is equal to 35 times the tangent of 38. So I've got two options here. I can type both things in and store them in A and B. Of course, you want to make sure you store it before we move on to the next one. And then do B minus A, absolutely fine. Or, since I know this is all I'm doing and it's nothing crazy complicated, and I have the exact forms here, really X is just equal to B, which is 35 times the tangent of 38, minus 35 times the tangent of 27. And I think, actually, that it's easier just to type it in like that than to worry about storing things and recalling it and doing whatever. But you have to be very careful because when you type this, it's going to open these parentheses whether you want it to or not. And if you do not close them, it's going to take 38 minus that value, then take the tangent of it, multiply it by 35, and bad things happen and that's wrong. So just make sure you're using your parentheses correctly. You don't even have to put the, the two terms in parentheses, just the ones they open for you. And if you just type it in like you see it, you'll get an answer and we can say that max is many feet above John. And what do we get for that number? 9.512 feet. Good. 9.512 feet. Okay. We agree with that? Yes. Make sure you can get that. You're typing things in correctly. That's what I was thinking. I was like, they're like simplifying the names because yeah. the H's really do nothing. I thought the same thing. Technically. She has an extra N and a missing H. Does she have two N's in your name? Sometimes Hannah's just spelled with one. Not all Hannah's. It's not a rule. Well, I thought all Hannah's had H's, but apparently not. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so flip it over once mine decides to catch up. Okay. So number seven. Building A is... 464 feet tall, and building B is 321 feet tall. Dale is standing between the, the buildings. So that in itself is enough for you to get a picture drawn. Take those first two sentences, draw a picture. You're not going to label everything just yet, but just draw that picture. Yes, you're drawing. <laughs> Can you do what? Yeah, if you want to, you can. Does your drawing look something remotely like mine? I mean, it doesn't have to be exactly like mine. That's why I want you to just kind of draw it on your own, not just copy mine. The first time I drew this, I drew A taller than B, because A is taller than B, but I wasn't even paying attention to the numbers. So even if they look like they're the same height, it really doesn't matter as long as everything gets labeled correctly. The key here is that you got two buildings and he's standing in between them. And labeling them A and B is probably a good idea too. So this first one is 464 feet tall. The other one is 321 feet tall. Okay, he's standing between them. Then it says, this actually says the angle of elevation from the point on the ground where, Dan, where Dale is standing. So that's going, it's assuring you it's from the ground. Uh, to the top of building A is 75 degrees. To the top of building B is 48 degrees. And I want to know how far apart the buildings are. Well, I have to do this in two pieces, so I'll call this one X and this one y. So in the end, the total that I'm looking for is just going to be x plus y. Which again, we could store and do it that way, but we're not going to store this one either. So when I go to set these up, am I using sine, cosine, or tangent? Tangent. Okay, so I'll start with a. So the tangent of 75 is equal to the opposite, which is 464, over the adjacent, which is x. Variables in the denominator, so they switch places. And I get x is equal to 464 divided by the tangent of 75. I've got my exact answer. I'm going to stop and go do the other one. So this is going to be the tangent of 48. It's equal to the opposite, which is 321, over the adjacent, which is y, which those could have been any letters, it doesn't matter. 
and then y is equal to 321 over the tangent of 48. So once again, I could store them both and then um, figure it out from there. But I can also just add them together like they are. So I can take this 464 over the tangent of 75 plus 321 over the tangent of 48. Now if we were using the 83s, I would probably suggest that we store it because that would actually be easier on that calculator. But on these, these do fractions very, very nicely. So let me make sure you know how to get to the fraction part easily. And I, again, I apologize that you can't really see this very well. But um, so we start with the first one. The easiest way I think to make a fraction on here is to go ahead and type the numerator in if it's just one term and then hit the fraction button, which is right below calc right here, and it puts it in the numerator. And then I can type in the denominator, which is the tangent of 75 and I have to close the parentheses. The problem I have now is that my cursor is still in the denominator. So if I use the big uh, oval key here and you arrow to the right, it takes it out of the denominator and it puts it, oh, puts it next to the fraction. I don't know if y'all can see that better than I can or not. And then just plus, and then I can do the same thing. Um, 321, hit the fraction key. Yeah, but then I have to arrow down to the denominator. It saves me a keystroke and I'm lazy, so. But yes, you can do it first. Yes, you can do it first. And then that's times the tan or divided by the tangent of 48. But you have to close this last parenthesis. If you do not, it will give you an error. And then, okay, ooh, cool. There we go. I think I finally got something you can see. Um, you can uh, you can see this arrow over to the left because you can't see it all. So you can arrow to the left, and then you can see all the fractions. So you can see exactly what you have which you can't even do that if they're both stored. So once you have it all in there correctly, you can hit equals to get your answer. And then we answer the question by saying the buildings are 413, oh, that's, okay, 413.358, is that right? Three, five, eight feet apart. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. All right, good deal. All right, so let's talk about angles of depression because as far as drawing things, I mean, it's one thing if you can't get the buildings in the right place and whatever else, but then you got, you got to make sure you're getting the angles in the correct place. So angle of depression or angle of elevation, both of them are measured from a horizontal line that is parallel to the ground. So before you have an angle of depression, you have to look straight ahead, then you look down to create this angle of depression. This is where the angle of depression is, not here, which is where people want to put the angle of depression and it does not go there. It has to be made with the horizontal. So either you get them all right or you get them all wrong is what it boils down to. So don't be the person that's getting every single angle of depression wrong every single time because it will happen. So, and it would, yes, cause depression. So from the top of the lighthouse, 150 feet above sea level, the angle of depression to a boat at sea is 28 degrees. What is the horizontal distance from the boat to the lighthouse? All right, so here's my lighthouse, here's the water, and here's my boat out here, okay? So the angle of depression from the top of the lighthouse to the boat, before that gets measured, you have to start with the horizontal line, then you get that angle of depression. This right here is your 28 degrees. This is 150 feet, it's the right angle, and then we want the distance here is what we're looking for. So now when I draw that, I've got this triangle that doesn't have an angle in it because the angle's outside the triangle. So is this right here 28 degrees? No. no. Is this 28 degrees? Yes. yes. Because what type of angle pair is this? Alternate interior angles. You have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. Alternate interior angle line. I told you all this stuff wasn't going away. You got alternate interior angles. Now you have a triangle and set it up and solve it, okay? Yes? So when you're doing this, do you have to draw the triangle on the bottom? No. You absolutely could, and that's what I was going to do on the next one. So very good question. Good transition to the next oh problem. God. It's whatever makes the most sense to you, because you either have to move side links or you have to move an angle, and so you have to move something, but whatever you, know, whatever you can see and whatever makes the most sense to you is fine. So yes, you don't have to draw it like that. Let's do another one, and I'll do it a little bit different. 
Look at number 10. It says Henry is sitting in a tree 32 feet above the ground. So here's the tree, right? Here's the ground, and he's looking at this deer, right? So I'm going to draw this because i got my numbers all messed up. There's my deer. Um, so it's 32 feet above the ground. The deer is 57 feet from the base. And then Henry's up here. So he's looking straight ahead. Then he looks down at the deer. This is your angle of depression right here, which we'll call theta because we're actually looking for that. So again, I could put theta down here and because they're alternate tree angles and use this triangle. Or I can finish it off this way. And if I do that, well, I make a rectangle. So if this is 57, this is 57. And if this is 32, this is 32. And then you use what I call the upside down triangle, but it's not really upside down because there's not a right way to do it, but um, the, you can just use that triangle for the whole thing. It doesn't matter either way. You get the same answer because the triangles are congruent. It's whatever makes the most sense for you to label, okay? Everybody okay with that? Yes. The key is looking straight ahead before you look down or even before you look up. All right, so let's look at number 12. So it says, a scuba diver spots a shipwreck at an angle of depression of 26 degrees. And the angle of elevation from the scuba diver to his boat is 53 degrees. If the shipwreck is located directly below his boat and the horizontal distance between the scuba diver and the shipwreck is 120 feet. Oops. Oh, shoot. Okay, hang on. I grabbed the wrong thing there. Um, then find the vertical distance between the shipwreck and the boat. All right, so I know that I have some water, right? I have a boat up here. And directly below that boat is the shipwreck. So there's my shipwreck and there's my boat. There's a scuba diver in the water that's not directly in line with them because it says he's, he's away from them. So here's my scuba diver, right? And um, we've got, he spots the shipwreck at an angle of depression of 26 degrees. Well, he has to look straight ahead before he can look down at the shipwreck. And this is 26 degrees. And then he has to look straight ahead before he can look up at his boat, and this is 53 degrees. The shipwreck is located directly below the boat, so these things are in line here. And he is, let's see, the horizontal distance between him and the shipwreck is 120 feet. So this distance right here, and I'll draw it out here, is 120 feet. So I have two right triangles here, which again, I have to do them separately because I don't have enough information to do them without doing right triangles anyway. And um, I can call this piece X and this piece Y. And then I just do them as two different problems and add them together. Get X plus Y in the end. Okay. Just got to get them later. Mm -hmm. Is that what, like, draw a line that Yeah, I said no. But if you don't know what's what and you can't get it drawn correctly, and, I, and you draw just triangles and I say, where's your boat, and you can't answer that question, then whatever. But no, they don't have to do it. Okay, we're good? You can put a B for boat and uh, you know, S for shipwreck if there's something. That, I'm fine with that. It doesn't, doesn't matter. But I, but I don't want you to spend 30 minutes drawing a beautiful picture either. No. Like, you got to draw a picture, but no, you don't have to have, like, the Titanic sketched out and whatever. Okay. Are we good? Yeah. I want clips. Yeah, find a picture in a magazine and cut it out. Are we all good? Awesome. <laughs> yeah, exactly.